hi, this is Jessa from iPad Rehab, and we're going to do an iPad mini screen replacement today. So this is a regular old cracked um, cracked iPad mini, and we're going to go ahead and do a screen replacement because I want to I want to show you guys about the backlight filter and how how you actually blow the backlight filter or fuse and how you don't. So we're going to we're going to kind of look into that. This is an iPad mini that I uh, bought online to to refurbish. All right, so we're gonna heat up the screen. Step one. And it really doesn't matter where you where you start your screen replacement. This is where the, the digitizer flex is. So sometimes it can be a little bit easier to, to open your device here because it kind of has a natural tendency to lift since the uh, digitizer is going to push up on it, the digitizer flex. But that's not always the case. I can understand why the hot plate method would be would be better, but we really don't do a ton of screen replacements, so I just kind of never bothered with that. I did buy at a at a uh, garage sale something I thought would be cool. The uh, old school, um, I think they're bread warmers actually. We used to have one when I was a kid that mom would let us use for melting crayons on. It was pretty cool. I thought that would be the solution to heat for screen replacements, but it just didn't get hot enough. So if you're out at the garage sales, seems cool, but not worth it. One thing that's cool, I saw a shop has a computer, <clears throat> computer controlled uh, temperature heating system. I think that sounds pretty awesome. That would be a good product to sort of look into. I think there's a lot of cool ideas that people have that could be products. I watched the video that I made yesterday and it was like some some old lady was um, had substituted her hands for my hands. When did that happen? So with my technician, I like to always sort of recommend to put on gloves. It really helps. It really helps when you are going to try to avoid getting fingerprints on your LCD. So like the blog says, I wrote my ultimate mini post. The magnets are there just for... Um, just to hold the smart covers in place so they don't really have any kind of electrical function. And now here we're going to look really closely. This is an original screen, so let's look at it really closely and kind of point a few things out. All right, let's see if we can kind of focus on that. So look at how the digitizer flex lies in the original. See how it sort of, it doesn't have a crease but it, it pushes towards the LCD. And what's really one of the most common mistakes is to allow this flex to, to touch the um, adhesive after you pull the adhesive. And then when that sticks on there, it'll bend this backwards towards the frame and then you'll fold it and it'll make a really sharp crease in that thing. And then if we kind of look over here, we can see how the um, original is taped. 
with one piece of tape and then a smaller piece of tape. And in the original, this little copper dot is exposed, so um, sometimes I leave that also exposed in my replacements. In the original, there's cloth tape along the bottom edge all the way along the digitizer. So that's what we want our finished product to look like um, as well. All right, so now we're gonna take up our LCD screws. One tip here is never lose these screws. I've gotten a lot of, you know, kind of minis in that I um, refurbish or somebody, somebody sells me a mini and then when they don't include these four LCD screws, they're really strange screws and they're extremely difficult to find in the marketplace. <clears throat> All right. Um, here, there's two, the two remaining screws have a little bit of foam tape on them and you can either pull that tape off and transfer it over. You can pull it off and omit it. Um, or you can just screw down through screw down through the tape and it'll stay stuck to the to the screw and then you can kind of keep it as designed all right so we've got our magnets off and our lcd screws all right now here's a here's a good place to cost yourself uh, 50 bucks if you uh make a mistake here and wreck up your ipad mini LCD. So the LCD itself doesn't like to bend. And a lot of people end up with a problem where they're where they're asking, you know, um, can you fix this uh, problem? There's lines in my display or and my display is half black or it just doesn't turn on. And all of those are related to, to just LCD defects. This thing is thin, doesn't like to flex, and it's really easy to it's really easy, like right here on mine. You can see how I've left some glass there. If I were to pull this straight up right now, it would it would catch that little bit of glass that's left and and it wouldn't be happy about that. It doesn't like it doesn't like to have to work around anything. So I'm gonna take that off. You know, once I had a once I had a mini that had just the I didn't even see it, the tiniest little um just tiny dent in the sidewall and when I put it back together the, the LCD had a, a defect from that spot. All right next thing here is I'm gonna um, insert between the LCD and the metal shield underneath. Not both of them. If I try to get them both up then I'm gonna end up pulling, pulling uh, with too much force and I'm going to damage the LCD. All right, so the tool to use is ideally a couple of these or something similar. So we're just going to get one edge lifted a little bit. Let's make it so you can see that. And this guy can just kind of wiggle around on the edge, and now we'll try to do the same thing with the other edge. And if we just kind of push down, you can use two of these and just sort of free those edges. Wiggle it a little bit side to side. And then you're gonna feel some resistance down at the bottom, at the at the bottom of the LCD, it is taped along here and along there. So you can solve this a couple different ways. You can uh, peel that tape off, but the quickest way to do it, which most people do, is to just is to just cut right through it. So use something kind of sharp. This is just some tweezers, and we're gonna just cut through the piece of tape there. Right, then on the other side, there's a small piece of tape right here that we can lift off. Let's kind of save that maybe. And then we will again cut 
with any sharp pull through through the tape. We're going to be really careful not to cut the LCD flex. You're just cutting the piece of tape here. You could peel off this roll and peel the tape down. But none of this seems to be super important for your final final result. All right, so now our LCD is free. Okay, so next we are going to um, have a little bit of wrist exercises and take up the, uh, I think it's 16 iPad mini screws. And we're going to keep them on their own magnet. I like to use, you know, let's do the, let's use the good old letter P for pain in the ass. P for pain in the ass, 16 different screws. All right. I think it would be cool to have a um, electric screwdriver. I think I saw one once. That would be super helpful if you're doing a ton of iPad mini repairs. When I first started, I had no clue uh, that you could you could actually magnetize screwdrivers yourself with by just running them across the magnet. This one seems okay, but magnetized screwdrivers are important. You can buy this little tool, which I love, to magnetize. Or if you don't have that, you can just use a standard magnet and run it across the magnet 10 times to get your screwdrivers a little bit more magnetized. All right, so I think that's all of the annoying screws. Time to take off this uh, LCD plate, and you want to keep it nice and flat. If you get a bend in it, if you crinkle it in some way, then that's going to cause a lift on the LCD when you re go to reinstall it. So sort of bend it up from the middle and take it out nice and flat and put it to the side. Next, you've got your little shield with three screws, and I'm going to put that on a different, uh, a different magnet because I don't want to mix up those, um, mix up those screws. I need to turn that phone off. So we'll use the letter Y for why did you use smaller screws? If you forget and mix these together with the uh, larger screws. And this is a really tiny difference. Then you're going to be you're going to be sad here. Let's see if we can get a picture of that really pretty close. Small big If you mix them up, that difference is enough that in the uh, iPad mini uh, Retina especially you will end up really horribly cracking off one of your screw brackets, which can tear the board. I saw that one time, you know, just really horrible damage. All right, here we are. What are you going to do next? If, you're, if you've done a mini before, you're going to recognize that the next thing to do is to pull that battery connector and then the LCD connector and then the digitizer connector. And, um, and, and the reason why is because the, uh, the backlight, uh, circuit, which goes through this connector right down here, um, always has a little bit of juice running through it, even though this iPad is turned off. I turned it off before, we, before we started. And if you don't, then you can end up causing an iPad mini backlight filter problem. And, um, and that's true. If you were to pull off this uh, battery connector, then you will um, have it have a you will have no chance of blowing your backlight filter. However, the um, the reason the backlight filter the reason the backlight filter gets destroyed is because there's a, a little hot pin carrying current that's right next to the ground pin, 
And if you if you actually pull the connector off pretty quickly, then you're you're pretty safe. You don't even have to be careful to rip the thing off, even with the battery connected, even with it under full power, juice going to the display all lit up, you can pull it right off. And let's see if um, let's see if I can demonstrate that, or maybe I'm an idiot, but that's what I think uh, is true. So we'll go ahead and power on this this mini and kind of confirm that that uh, my uh, technique here was sufficient to keep the LCD and all right here we go we can see that that's all still lit up the backlight is going strong I'll lay down the and now I'm going to pull it right off. Pulled it off. Back. We can see that that's all still lit up. The backlight is going strong. I'll lay down the... And now I'm going to pull it right off. Pulled it off. Battery still connected. Did I blow my backlight filter? I'm going to go with no. So let's check. We're going to take off the take a look under the microscope. Backlight filter is perfectly intact. Let you see this. You can always tell just visually whether or not the backlight filter is is uh is is nice and healthy or not do you see it there in the middle gosh this is always so difficult backlight filter right there and it looks good it's intact no discoloration no blob of solder coming out of the side of that and i'll show you we'll just reverse those steps plug it back in I did unplug it to show you the, the filter. And here we go. It's perfectly fine. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do that again, maybe with a little bit of a of a of a wider view here. So you can absolutely pull off your LCD all day long if you want to, as long as you're you're quick about it and you just rip it right off without allowing the um, connector to short itself out. So it's less about, you know, oh, you have to remember to disconnect the battery, which you do. That's a good, a good just sort of general habit. Let's see if I can come up with something with a little bit of a better view. Maybe something like this. All right, so here we go again. LCD is on. I'm going to drop down, drop my digitizer so that I'm just hanging on to the LCD itself. Clearly the LCD is on. Rip it off. It's going to be fine. There's your battery. It's still connected. Now I'm going to disconnect it so that I can carefully plug it back in. And let's see if you can see that connector. All right, see all those, uh, you've got some pins there, the gold pins. It's pulling it slowly where you somehow are able to short together some of those pins. That's what does the problem. All right, put it back on, reconnect the battery again, power on, and there's your backlit. I think I, I tried to do this one time. I was I uh, wanted to really understand the iPad Mini backlight problem since it's so common. I spent a whole Saturday trying to trying to actually purposefully 
uh, blow the backlight filter. It was it was hard to do if you um, aren't you know like worried about the mini and it's your first time. If you're confident and you've done a ton of minis, then then it's no big deal. All right, so this LCD is totally fine. Okay. Yeah, I'm almost done. All right, so we're going to continue on and forget about the, uh, the you know, difficult problem of actually blowing the iPad mini backlight filter. Is it a long time? Yeah. You're tired of waiting? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. How about five minutes? Okay. Okay, I'll speed up. We'll stop trying to break things. Okay, so now we are going to... Um, we're going to just get this sucker finished up. Okay, so now we are going to follow. Um, uh, what was that about you being quiet? We're going to go ahead and take the uh, battery connector off. One thing to note, don't pry or use a tool right here. There is an important component that's required for the board to sense the uh, battery's gas gauge. And if you click it off, then you're going to have a problem where it looks like the iPad doesn't charge or the battery percentage doesn't change. So we'll go ahead and flick that off. Next problem, moving over our LCD. Next problem is here at the digitizer connector itself. So the digitizer connector is um, just a really finicky little tiny easy to break piece of plastic and it probably has something to do with the fact that this this piece here the um the ic chip can kind of go in at any angle it, it wants really so we're gonna rip it out and now we have to just sort of take the connector off and as long as you sort of just keep in mind gee i know this thing's really easy to break then that can kind of help you, you know, just use enough care to flick it off without damaging anything. So all those little gold pins are intact. If you're missing a gold pin, you need to send it out for board repair to have that connector replaced. Without all the gold pins, then you'll lose touchscreen function or home button function. You need to test both touchscreen and home button function. Okay, so now we're going to take out the old the old screen, done. Those original touchscreen ICs used to have some value, but not anymore. Um, but it's not five minutes. It's probably only been like two minutes. Right, hurry up. Now, Maisie, the important thing to do next for your quality screen replacement is you, you've got to get off um, all the adhesive. If we don't do that, then this is not going to make a really professional seal. I use this thing. This is a uh, 3M uh, Scotch 3M sticker and marker remover pen, and I really like it. So I just sort of color the frame hey Maisie why don't you pack a couple of toys sure oh yeah what girl doesn't love to play with uh, a crazy monster like that What's that thing called? Sour. Sarah. No, Sawa. Sawa? Yeah. Oh. It's probably me. It's what? It's probably me. It's probably me. <laughs> That's a local person. You better answer that. Yeah. Hi, this is Jessa. Yeah. Uh, yes, hi. Um, I got uh, your name um, for um, actually from the papers, and this is. Um, and I was just wondering um, if uh, my iPad. I had an iPad two, mm -hmm. and uh, my daughter.
Okay. Okay. Sounds great. No, and, and I certainly um, return the other little tool or whatever. Okay. Um, okay. Well, thank you so much. All right. It'll be fun. be fun. You're going to love it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks for well, coming. Fun. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, so we had a, a delay of game. I answered the phone for a nice local mom who is psyched to do um, a little drug deal tomorrow with me to get a iPad 2 screen at the, at the ski place. We're going to hook up in the locker room, and I'm going to teach her how to do an iPad 2 screen replacement. But that's done, and now we're back on to finishing up this iPad mini. And I have already... Cleaned off while I was on the phone with her, I, I uh, used the sticker remover pen to clean off all of the old adhesive, and then I went over that with some alcohol. And you can tell that this frame looks absolutely, you know, factory ready, and that's what you want it to look like. Um, if you get it to look like that, then you're going to have no problem with the um, adhesive that comes pre-installed on these replacement screens. All right, so here's our replacement screen. Um, I'm going to make a recommendation on screen suppliers in a little bit. I think I'm going to try out a few. This is the one that I use, which I, um, which I really like. Uh, it has uh, already uh, pre-installed cloth tape on the bottom, as in the original. And it comes with some Captain tape. It doesn't really matter what kind of tape is on here that's covering the um, the home flex. It has, you see less of them that, are, that don't have this now, but they used to have, all the home flexes did not have these SMD components on them. That those are the things that are responsible for smart cover lock and unlock function. Most of them have them now. I haven't seen one that doesn't have it in a long time, but it used to be pretty rare. All right, so to prep the screen, we need to add back our magnets that we saved and these screens have some uh, special adhesive for the magnets most of the replacement screens uh, do these days so we'll add back our magnets and for, with every screen you want to test it because somebody soldered that home flex right there under there's a solder joint and you know you have no no idea how how good of a job they did um, so you need to test every screen also you need to look at the underside of your touch IC and make sure that there's no exposed uh, solder joints there that could touch the frame on the bottom ah. okay so now we're gonna We're going to plug that back in, being really careful to not damage those uh, the pins of the digitizer connector. And you just want to kind of feel it click into place. There it goes. And press that down. Grab the LCD, lay that down, the battery connector here, this one looks good. All right, we'll put everything back together, and now we're going to... Test. Apple logo is going to come up. Now in our test, we need to test the top power button because that top power button is routed through that uh, home flex cable, which seems strange, but it's true. So you need to test the top power button. You need to test the home button function. You need to test the touch screen function to make sure before you seal that the digitizer itself is fine. So we've got digitizer function, then I'm going to test the top top button, test the home button, and then I'm going to just sort of press around here to see if it 
will lock, unlock, turn off. It does not. Sometimes you can have a low quality home flex that will be defective and in a, inappropriately activate that smart cover function. All right, this ditch digitizer is tested ready. I'm looking at the frame and I don't see any, um, I don't see anything that's going to give us trouble to lay it down. So we're ready to go do our wrist exercises again. All right, so from here we're going to... All right, so the phone fell over again, and we had to do a restart. It's come back up. I didn't wait for you. I went ahead and continued to to just screw in the small shield with the tiny screws, and then I put in the big shield, making sure that it doesn't have any kind of bend. This is pretty straightforward. One thing that came up today with iPad Mini, a buddy asked if, uh, you know, what to do when the iPad Mini, after your screen replacement, boots up to say, disabled for a million billion minutes, and there's nothing you can do. The, the secret to that is to get the Mini to connect to Wi-Fi, which it'll do on its own if you connect it to, if you take it somewhere where it's already connected. To a, to a Wi-Fi, like the person's home. So if you make a point to connect every mini to your store uh, Wi-Fi before you start it, then you won't have that sort of difficult problem. The natives are getting restless, so we gotta speed up. All right, we'll lay the LCD back down. And we'll screw in our four special screws. I wonder if uh, YouTube will give me a hard time about this soundtrack. Okay. All right, so now we are ready to get this thing closed up. I'm gonna use my compressed air to blow out the screen. And here's what I like about gloves. You know, you can, you can really take small bits of dust will just stick to the gloves if you want to just pick them up like that. Okay, we will um, pay attention to our flex. So the flex is ready to fold like we discussed in the beginning. It's going to fold toward the LCD and we're not going to allow it to stick back there and make a crease. All right, so I will pull the adhesive. I like these uh, digitizers because they have the pink. Hey, idiot, don't forget to pull the, to pull the inner shield on the digitizer 
All right. Now I like to, while I'm wearing gloves, I like to also pull the front off. That way I can really see if there's any kind of streak. Sometimes you'll get like sort of factory streaks from assembly on the, on the digitizer itself that, you know, kind of need to be cleaned off if you want it to have a, a really perfect finish. All right, I like to position the digitizer down at the bottom looking kind of like this. I don't know if you can see that or not. I've got my flex bending the way that I want it to go. And it's exactly how I want it on those corners. So now I'm going to use air the whole time until I get it sealed, sealed all the way down. Make real sure that my camera flex has gone into the camera flex hole. I have cracked one that way and this one looks like it's slightly off. Sometimes these brackets are just not really lined up the way you'd like them to be lined up. They're a little bit off. All right, so let's see if we can really take a look at this. So it is really perfectly, perfectly flush. Perfectly flush on every surface. And pressing it down. It's not sitting on top of the frame anywhere, which will cause a problem. It's really, really in there. Now I'm going to sort of set the the that same factory adhesive which I'm I think is fine. I mean, you can use red tape. Which is a very forgiving seal. One minute. Is it one? Gonna finish up. All right, so this, I think the, you know, red tape you can use, it's a fantastic forgiving seal. Um, he is. He's not here, buddy. Um, but some heat to sort of cure this uh, factory oh, VHB-based adhesive, I think that's what this black stuff is. I think it's I think it's fantastic. All right, so here's our here's our finished hey, product. Can I count till you're done? Yeah, you can count till I'm done. Maybe count till like a hundred. All right, let's turn it on. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 
everything's working. We can test out all the functions, but this is going to be this is going to be a really nice professional looking mini. And that's perfectly fine. All right. So that's the iPad mini screen replacement the way that that we do them here. We never have any serious problems with them anymore. No, you know, no backlight I mean, I, I can't even make it, I can't even make the backlight fuse filter get blown anymore. Um, it's, a, it's a robust repair if you use quality parts. If you um, pay attention to the, the things that I've listed on the blog in the iPad mini um, ultimate post. And it's a, you know, it's a very straightforward repair that's really not going to give you trouble if you just follow um, a, a few little tips and tricks. And that's it for this video.